The Bank of Canada has popped the debt bubble. Central banks around the world have hiked rates and are popping debt bubbles. What will happen in 2023? And what does this mean for 2023? Let's get right into this. Interest rates right now are at a historic high compared to where they've been in the past. In fact, if you look at the rapid pace of tightening that has occurred over 2022, it is the most rapid pace that we've ever seen before in history. And the thing is, we also have record high debt levels right now. Debt levels could not be higher. We have household debt that is extremely high. We have corporate debt that is extremely high. It means companies cannot withstand these higher rates. And it means going forward that we are gonna see more layoffs. We are gonna see more unemployment. The statistics and measures that we use to measure inflation, we know that they are massively broken. I have talked about it on this channel numerous times about how the CPI is just not accurate anymore. And when you look at all these models that are predicting from the Bank of Canada that unemployment might rise to 4.5% to 5% to 6%, they are underestimating what could happen. The thing is, during 2021, so many businesses took advantage of the low interest rates, took on lots more debt, in order to keep their operations going during 2021 and 2022. And what that has meant is that we've seen the amount of loans written to corporations absolutely surge. It surged to a high. And the thing that you get with that is it means that a lot of the corporations that were already over leveraged, because historically the amount of private debt compared to GDP is at a historic level here in Canada, and you've got the same thing that is playing out with households. So what does this mean? It essentially means that households just have not got the cash on their balance sheet to withstand a crisis situation. If somebody gets laid off or becomes unemployed, it becomes a huge issue because they just do not have the money. And in the past, they have relied on low interest rates and just these record low interest rates, essentially, in order to finance new debt, which has created these bigger and bigger bubbles that we've seen. And in Canada, the extreme nature of the can kicking is just evident everywhere. And it's not just in Canada, you also see this in Australia and New Zealand, and even so to a lesser degree in the United States. The reckless lending that has occurred is like a debt slavery for people. And you know, new immigrants pretty much learn as soon as they come to Canada that the way Canadians actually survive is not off higher income, it's off higher amounts of debt. It's a sad, sad situation. It's not something that just occurs one off. You're gonna see this play out not over a couple of years, it's gonna happen over 10 years, 20 years. These things aren't gonna play out very fast like people think. I think a lot of people are holding on right now thinking, and I know it's an optimistic thing to do. Believe me, I wanna be the optimist in this situation, but I think it's optimistic to say in one or two years, you're gonna be scooping up all these deals on assets and it's gonna be all rosy going forward. Granted, you might be doing that, but in that sort of situation, if you are doing that, what will that mean? That could mean that you have to deal with asset prices continually falling in real terms, because even though asset prices, they're gonna go up and down, in real terms, I just don't believe they're gonna go up anymore. I think we've reached the end now, where modern monetary theory has just completely gone wild. You've seen how governments like the Trump administration, the Biden administration, the Trudeau administration, all these governments have done exactly the same thing. No government is gonna save us from the reality that we are facing. They've all done the same thing. Stimulus, stimulus, stimulus. Do you have a position on the mandate? Do you, would you support a, a slightly higher tolerance for inflation? I don't know, when I think about the biggest, most important economic policy this government, if re-elected, would move forward, 
You'll forgive me if I don't think about monetary policy. You'll forgive me if I don't think about monetary policy. And this stimulus response, it creates inflation. It creates a lot of the problems that we see today. And now that they've worked out that this stimulus is a good tool, it's gonna be disastrous going forward because it means more inflation is likely because they just don't even understand the most basic of economic theories. And, you know, when it comes to creation of goods and services, that is what we need more of. People are just not incentivized to start small businesses in Canada right now. And, you know, I've seen so, so many people from smart and successful to your immigrant that has just moved to Canada saying that they want to get out of Canada. They want to leave, they're sick of it, they're sick of the taxes or the bureaucracy or the government, the political situation. No matter what it is, that is what I have heard throughout 2022, is people saying this constantly. And that just doesn't bode well for the future when you really think about it. So the thing is, I think you're gonna see this play out. I think it's gonna happen over a long period of time. What I think I wanna keep an eye on is actually people's purchasing power. What happens with people's purchasing power? I think that is gonna be one of the main things that I'm gonna look at in 2023. And really, it's not so much what happens with the CP lie. I don't really believe that metric one bit. It's what happens with the John Williams Shadow Stats 1980s based CPI. That is going to be more interesting than what happens with the government's manipulated version and take on inflation. So 2023 is going to be a tough year. It's going to be tougher than 2022. More people are going to lose their jobs. In fact, it could be insane the amount of people that lose their job in 2023. Be prepared for that. If you have some sort of a plan moving forward, then that puts you in a way better position than everybody else. If you're already prepared that you're gonna lose your job or your business in 2023, and you know what you have to do to sustain your standard of living, or at least keep it as high as possible, you're gonna be ahead of most people. I just wanna take this opportunity to thank you, everybody who's subscribed over this year. We went into this year with not even a thousand subscribers, and we have somehow ended up with over 30,000 subscribers in 2022. It's mind blowing, but it's all you guys that I have to thank for this because you're the ones that make this channel. I read through all your comments and I enjoy reading and hearing your insights. You know, I'm no expert by any means, but I'm just trying to bring the truth forward because I believe that that's what people need to hear is the truth. So they're better tooled up to educate themselves moving forward on the financial system or the Ponzi financial system and what is going on. So I will continue to be here shooting the truth. I love each and every one of you in a unique way. And thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. So if you've enjoyed this video, you might like that one there. You might also like that one there. I will see you on the next one. Take care, bye-bye.